Well, a good week, right? It's the middle of summer. Everybody's been uh, on vacationing, having an awesome time, right? So now we get to have a vacation by the school. I don't know whoever came up with that name. It's really good, right? <laughs> really good idea. So uh, you get to come and have fun together with the kids and uh, share the gospel with um, a lot of kids probably never heard it before. So yeah, I'm super excited about that. Again, if you're with us online, as Andy said, uh, welcome. My name is Michael. I'm the pastor here. In case you didn't know, Andy, you're here in person. Uh, I'm glad that you're here. <clears throat> and so we'll be in our series, actually. So interestingly enough, when I was working through and uh, praying over the passages that we would be over in First and Second Timothy, um, Andy and I were talking, and then I realized, oh, hey, we're going to be in Second Timothy uh, for VBS. So uh, we're going to jump from First Timothy to Second Timothy. And then we'll jump back next week to 1 Timothy. So turn with me in your Bibles if you have them. 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 8. <clears throat> and the focus today will be legendary. <laughs> you may have guessed that. The focus will be legendary. And the phrase I want to remember is keeping the main thing, the main thing. Uh, I heard this from a wise, retired pastor. This was actually a couple who came to our church with the first set of visitors came to our church um, after Christy and I came. This was almost three years ago. Um, Jerry and Betsy Reed, and uh, they visited. Uh, Jerry retired from pastoring for a number of reasons, and he was in Texas and uh, decided it was time he needed to come up here and be with family. And so he did that, and they visited our church. And one of the things he said to me um, after uh, we, he had been here for a few weeks and listened to some messages, he said, I like what you're saying, you're keeping the main thing the main thing. And what he was talking about was the gospel. And we've already mentioned that several times this morning. And it's really the main thing. It's the main reason that we're here. And it's also the main reason that we have VBS. So that kids might hear this life-transforming message. You might be interested to know, this is why we have such an emphasis with kids, like VBS and the youth events that we do, on sharing the gospel. The, the percentage of someone who will make a decision to trust in Jesus for the first time goes goes uh, to a very low percentage once you get past 18. And so this is why we emphasize that. We want to say, we want to take advantage of this opportunity and share with people. So what's the message? Well, we need to admit we're sinners, believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and confess that he's the Lord of our life so that we might have eternal life. Seems simple. I think it is. I think we may make it a little more complicated than it needs to be. So first point, right? We're talking about legendary. What do we need to be? Well, we need to have a legendary purpose, and some of you might think, well, I'm not some star athlete. You know, I'm not Michael Jordan, still to go to basketball. I don't, you know, don't talk to me about LeBron. So <laughs> you've got Michael Jordan, right? Uh, uh, maybe you've got Tom Brady in football. You can think of all these different characters who are uh, legendary in their sport. Um, when it comes down to it, we think, like, well, how do, how do we live like this? How do we have a le legendary purpose? Well, the cool thing is God's already set that up in advance for us, and it's centered around the gospel. And I think each one of us has a specific purpose in this life as well for how he's going to use us to forward that message of the gospel, okay? So in verse 1, that's our first fill in the blank, legendary purpose. Verse 1 says, I charge you in the presence of God in Christ Jesus who is to judge the living and the dead by his appearing in his kingdom. So we have purpose in this God and that we serve, and we belong to something bigger. Like, that's something that my generation, millennials, just go with. It doesn't matter if it's not a good idea or if it's not a good cause. Millennials are just like, we just need something to do. Like, we, we, need, a, we need a cause to follow. They just jump in with anything and everything, whether it's like, save the whales, or, you know, uh, whatever it might be, they just, they just jump in, you know. Um, don't really think about it too much. And so uh, I, I like to think about this because our purpose, while it's legendary, it's, I mean, we don't have to be like, I wonder what it is. I'm trying to figure it out. Well, God's already got that set up for us. And again, it's centered around the gospel and belonging to his kingdom. <clears throat> it was a few months ago, uh, we were talking about things that happen at school, and we have a lot of conversations with Alana about this. And um, she looked at me one day and she said, Dad, you want to say the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> and I said, I said, sure, let's say the Pledge of Allegiance. So we did it. It was a very patriotic moment, uh, you know, hand over heart. And um, wait, Dad, where's our flag? We want a flag. So, because uh, they do that, right? So it's a good thing, right? You're in school, you said the Pledge of Allegiance, right? I feel like nowadays, it's like we, we, we think about this legendary purpose. Sydney wants to say something. You can do it. <laughs> we think about this legendary purpose, and it's, it's difficult for us to frame this, right? We think about being an American, and most of us probably in the room today would say, yeah, I've got a great purpose. Yeah, I'm an American citizen. I belong 
to God, even though we see really strange things around the world, don't we? It's like 4th of July, there's like pictures of people burning flags, and I was like, you don't like what's going on, I get that, but maybe you took it too far, right? Maybe you took it a little too far. And so I love that moment, though, because I was just, I was sitting with her, and I thought, oh, this is cool, but she gets it, right? I'm proud to be, that's the word, an American, right? Well, the question is, are we proud to be a follower of God? And does that does that frame for us, like, who we are and what we do? Like, a lot of us really love that, like, patriotism, right? There's flags all over the place. Um, I like that. I like seeing that. But more than that, I wonder if we really take seriously, like, this call in our lives, this purpose that we have goes deeper than just being a citizen of a great nation, right? It goes to belonging to God. So we've got purpose in that. It's legendary. It has existed for quite a while. Uh, and then verse 2 is this year. We have this purpose in the call on our lives. So what does it say here? Verse 2, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with complete patience and teaching. Well, we know that Timothy had a very specific purpose. And as Paul's talking to him, uh, we've got to think about where Paul's at, too, because in 2 Timothy, it's different than in 1 Timothy. Now, 1 Timothy, uh, Paul is relatively free. He's kind of moving about. He's still uh, spreading the gospel message. And in 2 Timothy, Paul, who's writing to Timothy at the church in Ephesus, is more than likely in a cold, dark, nasty dungeon, chained up. And he's waiting his trial, which is really going to be more of just an execution. And he's sitting there going, what are the things that Timothy needs to know? And the question is, and I always like you know, just you know, talking with people who are maybe towards the end of life. They have better perspective, don't they? And so as I'm asking those questions, I always ask somebody in that phase of life, like, what's the most important things? My perspective, well, it's a little smaller than theirs is. And so like Paul, what Paul's saying to Timothy here is you need to be ready, right? To preach the word. Be ready in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience in teaching. Now, I don't know specifically what your purpose is outside of primarily knowing and loving God, but what is that supposed to do? It's supposed to bleed into what we do for work, right? What we do for leisure or involvement, what we volunteer in, uh, wherever we go, People should not just see the gospel. They should hear it. And we're going to be sharing it this week. And I know some of us think, well, you know, we're part of EBS, so like that's my outreach. And I really don't like to talk about it, you know, any other time. What I would encourage you in is, is maybe, again, maybe it's not as hard as we think it is. This legendary purpose that we have can find itself launching into all these other spaces. We get so stressed out. We're like, oh, I can't share my faith. I don't know how to do that. I'm not, well, admit, believe, confess. Right? It's not that difficult. And so we share this message, and however it works out for you, I want to um, encourage you that we, we do all have a purpose. And maybe it's not, I know we think of like, well, preaching, uh, you know, rebuking. I'm not going to stand up on a soapbox like downtown and start yelling at people. Nobody's asking you to do that. In fact, in Timothy's call, he was just called the pastor of the church. But I wonder what it looks like for each of you. And I can't answer that question for you. I know what Timothy's call was, but in all of this, we've got this legendary purpose and you may think well like what i do doesn't matter like i know i go to who wants to talk about more <laughs> what i do doesn't matter i go to a, you know i teach like i'm kind of limited in that way or i can't you know i've talked to many of you that you have relationships with people who are in your schools and your place of work and you you have a lot of interaction inside and out and you're able to because it's free country right i mean last time i checked <laughs> you're able to share the gospel you're able to encourage you're able to say like when difficult things are happening for you you're able to go hey this is how I've navigated this, right? And, and isn't it so tough? I think we, we like to make a lot of excuses. Like, I will be involved in BBS. But again, anything else like legendary purpose? I don't know. BBS is legendary. It is. It's been around for a long time. Uh, but mm, my purpose, I'm not sure. And God's given us each a very specific purpose. And it's legendary because it, in all actuality, doesn't really have anything to do with us specifically. It has to do with what God has already done, right? He's already prepared for us what we're going to do. And the question is, are we going to walk in that? The legendary purpose. Well, the second thing is the legendary focus. We got legendary purpose, a legendary focus. And so <clears throat> within this, we uh, I think one of the best ways we see this, we, we did a series, uh, I guess it was about a year and a half ago, um, 2020, the next 200. And in that, we really were kind of reordering our vision or our focus around what God wanted for us, for this church. Uh, for this community. How are we going to minister? What are we going to do? But here, I think in a similar way, we've got to understand, like, where should we not be? Like, what lane should we not be in? What lane should we be in? 
there's places to avoid, there's places to focus in on and really dial in on. So verse 1 says this, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. Hmm. We've seen a lot of this, I think, haven't we? Especially in recent times. People like to be told, you're awesome, man. You know, no matter what you do, like, it doesn't matter. You can believe that, or you can believe this, or you can be a believer. You can treat people poorly. Don't worry, God's still love you. He's going to forgive you. And no matter what, you don't have to really act like a Christian. You can just do whatever you want, right? Well, this is what was going on. So in Ephesus, people were just gathering around people to themselves. They were, they were saying, uh, you know, I really don't like being told, like, sometimes there's parts of my life that don't match up with the gospel, with God's word. I don't like hearing those things because they make me feel bad. And then I go like, you know, God, I'm sorry. You know, it happened again, right? But if I don't have people around me that are telling me the truth, they're just telling me things I like to hear. Like, you're awesome. You're great. Nothing you ever, you've ever done or ever will do will ever be wrong or bad, right? Well, that's pretty nice, right? We just have those people whispering that everything's wonderful, right? We don't have any people around us. We have teachers, right? <laughs> We put, it says teachers here for the themselves, teachers to suit their own passion, right? That'd be nice, kids. It's like you go to school, you know, geometry, physics, oh, that is really hard. So, okay, teacher, here's what I need you to do. I, I'm, I, whatever answers I put on the test, you know, I'm going to put them down, but I'm just going to need you to give me an A no matter what, right? Does that work, right? If we go to school, we study, you know, <laughs> it doesn't really work that way, right? So we've got specific standards and goals for our lives, and they've got to match up with what the, God's Word says. Uh, but people were putting people around themselves, tickling their ears, what the Scripture talks about. And then in verse 4, but we've got to keep this focus off of distraction, I feel like. If we can kind of know, hey, where are we not going to go? What are we not going to focus on? Then it's helpful. So what were they doing? Well, in verse 4 it says, and we'll turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. This word here for turn away is pretty interesting. In the Greek, it's one word, turn away, apostropho, and it means to turn away from allegiance to anyone. Does that sound like where we're at in the culture, right? Proud to be an American, or I can burn a flag, and, you know, there's no consequences for that, right? <laughs> That's just uh, what's politically correct right now. I can, I can treat anybody I want, however I want, and there's no consequences, right? Well... For the church, like Paul's going, like people are doing this right now. You need to be on the lookout, look out for this, uh, and not allow this, especially in the church, because some will turn away and they will have allegiance to nobody. Like he'll say, like, wow, well, I, I like to be a citizen of Rome or whatever you know, that was going on in Ephesus. Well, I like to be a Christian, but you know, I have to do any of the stuff you know that you know Timothy the pastor is talking about, or right? You know, that's not really going to work for me. Like I'll show up, right? I'll show up for big events. I'll be there, but. Do I have to do that stuff, right? Paul was saying they're going to gather for themselves. People are going to whisper in their ears, say things they like to hear. And then what are they going to do? They're going to turn away, and they're going to have allegiance to nobody, right? But that's our culture, isn't it? Even right now, some, sometimes people will tell me, like, you know, Bible, <clears throat> kind of outdated. I mean, read a long time ago. Have you read it recently? I said, yeah, you know, read it every day. And then, <laughs> and then they say, well, you know, I just I can't really find anything that applies to me right now. I go, I want to take a closer look, right? <laughs> he says, we read this, we go, man, people turn away and they have allegiance to no one, right? It's not a good place to be. So who do we have allegiance to? God. And this is ultimately, we've got this legendary purpose. We've got this legendary focus because who do we have it on God? He's our ultimate source of authority and truth. And <gasps> God forbid we have ultimate authority, right? And uh, a source of truth that doesn't come from ourselves, right? Because that goes bad. I mean, we've been reading in Proverbs, and it's like, there's a way that seems right to man. But in the end, what does it lead to? Death. Mm -hmm. So as we look to God's word, that's where we need to be, right? That's where, that's where our source of truth is. Uh, I mean, it's easy to get to this place. Um, and it's only really only a few steps away from it ourselves. We begin to think that uh, we can just trade the Bible for something else, for our own thoughts or desires. Or somebody gets around us who says something we like that's contrary to the Bible. It's easy, right? So in verse 4, we focus on what matters. So Paul kind of turns the ship. He goes, hey, here's what's happening. People are just gathering for themselves. People are whispering in their ears and saying what they want to hear. But what do you need to do? He says, as for you, always be sober-minded, enduring suffering, doing the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. 
Now, I think as we read this too, we kind of, at times we'll read it and we think like, well, that was for Timothy, right? I mean, an evangelist, I'm not that, right? I'm not a preacher, so I don't need to gather anything from this, but there's so much here that gives us understanding for what our focus should be. And that's for you, because he was writing to who? He was writing to Timothy, the pastor, but he was also writing to the church in Ephesus. And they would have been reading this going like, wow, my God, this is a great calling, Timothy, awesome. But where were they at in this? Well, always be what? Sober-minded, enduring suffering, doing the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry, <clears throat> whatever that was. I think sometimes, and, I, and we came from Texas, so we were in uh, like, like like big churches. So there's, there was this mentality to come to church and go like, you're the pastor, <laughs> you do your thing. Like we're just going to watch. And uh, man, I can't tell you how much that just drove me crazy. Like, Yes, I do this vocationally, but if you're a believer, if you're following Jesus, then you've got a purpose as well. And so what does he say? Always be sober-minded. And this word in the Greek, in the foe, to be sober, okay? To be calm and collected in spirit, to be temperate, dispassionate, or circumspect. The same word's used in 1 Timothy 1.13. It says, therefore, preparing your minds for action, being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So what are we supposed to do? Being ready for action. Is that just sort of like, you know what? Pastor, you do your thing. I'm going to sit on the couch. And then, you know, whenever there's like an important time that comes up, you know, we talk about this. Like, right, BBS, we're all gathered here. And it's a good thing that we're doing this. But what are we doing before and after? David talked a couple of weeks ago about these big events, right? These big things that come up. And we tend to focus on those. But, but what about in between all this stuff? Like, what about the, the conversations we're having with friends, family? Co-workers, the lives that we have the ability to have an impact on in between all of that? Like, why take a back seat? Like, why sit on the couch all that time and just go, yeah, I've got this legendary purpose. You know, I find it on Sunday at church, and every once in a while we do something else special. But why not have a legendary purpose all the time? And why not have this legendary focus that First Timothy talks about being ready <clears throat> to do something with it? Uh, I'm always amazed uh, just in, in my uh, privilege that I get to serve with the fire department here in Elba. Um, and if you've ever been in those kind of emergency type of management situations, um, you've served in that role. I know we have some retired law enforcement here and uh, people have helped in that capacity. Uh, I want to just say, you know, hey, thank you for doing that. But also, uh, it's always interesting when you're going to help somebody in that kind of situation, whether it's a car accident or a fire, or there's a medical emergency. What's typically happening for you? And I've been there too. You as, as a family, like something is not good that's happening. And, and what do we do? We freak out, right? Like, what is going on? Like, I can't believe this is happening. Like, what are we supposed to do? Uh, but, but what's my job? Like, when, when I go down to the station, I get on a truck, I go somewhere. When I show up, am I supposed to go like, oh my gosh, what are we supposed to do? I don't know what's going on, right? Now, sometimes that type of setting can get the best of you, but, but what are you supposed to do in that setting? If you're supposed to be there to help, Okay, we're here to help. Here's what's going to happen. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get people where they need to go, right? And so, and that's difficult, right? I won't lie to you and say, like, there's times that I don't go to something and it, and it can kind of get the best of me, right? There are those kind of, those, those times happen. But what's the main job? What's our purpose? I mean, what are we supposed to be like when people are freaking out around us and they're going like, I just found out I had cancer, right? It's happened to me too. And I go, well, here's, here's what I did with that, right? Here's how God walked me through that. Here's what he did you know, throughout all of it. Uh, and so we, we help people. We walk alongside them, not just our church members, but those who are out in the world who are just going like, I don't have a legendary purpose. I don't have a legendary focus. I have no idea what I'm doing. And when the world crashes down, well, the world crashes down, right? And there's no hope. But for us as believers, what do we have? We've got that legendary purpose. We've got that legendary focus. So we're able to go in the moment. It's okay. Let me tell you you can have some hope in this situation. And so here's the last one. Legendary end. Legendary end. Now many of us, we don't like to think about this, right? The end. Whether that be the end of life or the end of like that next big event. Um, the thing that we're looking forward to. Vacation's over. We have to go back to school. Oh, man. Right? There are those seasons of life, right? There's things we look forward to and things we go like, I wish it wouldn't end. In the same way, Paul's got good perspective, doesn't he? I mean, he's been he's been left for dead a couple of times. I'm sure there were a few times where he was like sharing the gospel somewhere. He was uh, trying to plant a church, and people beat him up mercil mercilessly, and then they like left him somewhere. And they go, he's probably dead, 
That actually happened a few times. <laughs> so uh, can you imagine being Paul and going like, hey, I've been through all this, and now God's pretty much confirmed it, that like I'm really, I'm really at the end. Like, right, what, what should we do with that? Well, we've got this legendary purpose. We've got legendary focus so it's your outline. Uh, but what happens with this legendary end? What are we supposed to do? What's our perspective supposed to be? Um, I can't tell you from experience, but all I know is I've watched a lot of faithful saints um, go on to be with the Lord. Um, so I want to share some of that, but just kind of share the text with you too. So a legendary end. Well, in that we need to be poured out well. Really, that should be happening throughout our lives. But the verse here in verse 6 says, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. <clears throat> sometimes we don't know. Like sometimes it's sudden. We just don't know when the time for our departure has come. But Paul knew. He was going, the time for it has come. And with that perspective, he says, For I am already. What's he been doing his whole life? Like some of us just think like, yeah, he really finished well. And he's going to talk about that. Like finish that race well. But he's... He's saying it from this perspective of, I've been doing this. Like, you need to be doing the same thing. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering. And um, kind of strange wording. Um, in the Greek, actually, this whole phrase, being poured out as a drink offering, is the word spendo in the Greek. And it's actually, it's not used very often in, in Christian language at that time. Uh, it was used as a figure of speech, and it means to be used of one whose blood is poured out in a violent death. For the cause of God. Whoa, whoa, wait a second. Like when I heard like drink offering, I was like, you know, live well, go to church, be nice to people. I can pour out that drink, right? I mean, I can do that with my life. That doesn't seem so hard, does it? When Paul uses this word here, this phrase for us in English as it's translated, Timothy would have known exactly what he was talking about. In fact, when Paul, sitting in a dungeon, talking to Timothy through this letter and to the church in Ephesus. In fact, it would have been read in front of the whole church. So they get the letter, they're like, we got a letter from Paul, let's read it on Sunday. Like That's what they would have done. And so they would have been hearing this, and in 66 AD, which was very different than about 62, 63 AD, um, when Paul wrote 2 Timothy, in between that time period, there was this really bad event that happened in Rome. There was a really big fire. And so Nero, who was the emperor at the time, he hated Christians. In fact, he was already killing them. But then when this fire happened, it burned up a lot of Rome. You know what he did afterwards? He said, those Christians set that fire. And they burned down half of Rome. And he got the people behind him. He's like, anytime you see a Christian, anytime you see somebody practicing their faith, you tell us who they are. We're going to go get them. And we're going to put them in the Colosseum. We're going we're gonna to put them on a, a stick and light them on fire. That's what he did for fun. Like, in his, like his gardens were lit by Christians. He didn't know that. And so from this perspective, like Paul is saying to the church and to Timothy, they knew exactly what he was saying. It wasn't like a go to church on Sunday. It was a live your faith well, being willing, being ready to be poured out as an offering. Paul's like, I've already been doing it. You guys want to join me in it? Probably most of us would say, I'm not sure I want to, I'm not sure I want to pour that drink out. Right? But maybe at some time God might call us to do that. I think it's easier now for us as believers not living in a place of, um, I would say, lack of corruption because the whole world is filled with that, but a place where we can have a VBS at a park. Where we can talk to the town and be like, yes, VBS, church. Talk about God. That's awesome. Why don't you do that in our community? Like, there's, there's a lot of places you can't do that in the world. And we just like, no big deal. <laughs> We've been doing it every year, right? So, but should we view it like that? We should go, wow, this is like a great honor. This is a great privilege that we get to do that, share the gospel with people, publicize it. Come, kids, hear the good news that God has given us. And Paul was going like, hey, being poured out as this drink offering. And the time of my departure has come. He knew it. And then in verse 7, he says, I've fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. Now, <clears throat> I don't know who of us would be able to say that at the end of our lives. I mean, I think of many people I've walked alongside who have gone to be with the Lord, and I would say that about them, and <clears throat> I have at funerals many times. The question is, what's the trajectory for us right now? I think if we look at this and we go, we've got, yeah, we got that legendary purpose, we've got that legendary focus, but am I going to have a legendary end? Like, as I'm going towards that, as I'm getting closer to that, um, <clears throat> am I going to be able to say, did somebody else say that about me? Like, would they come visit my grave, my headstone, and like look at that and go like, finish the race well. Like that's always the question I want to think about. Like, um, I feel like I think about it more 
at my phase of life than maybe other people do my age, but, but it's given me great perspective. You know, going, man, I've watched a lot of people, like, live their whole lives for God and then finish well. And this is what Paul's trying to tell him. He goes, the end might be sooner than you think. <laughs> the end might be sooner than you think. You know, I fought the good fight. You fought to the end. I finished the race. I've kept the faith. So have we done this? Well, there's this going to be this amazing moment for each and every one of us. We stand before God. I hope it's a good moment. Um, <clears throat> there was this guy, uh, Nemesius of uh, Mesa. He was a Christian bi bishop and philosopher of the fourth century. He said something about this moment. He's like, as I'm finishing the race, I'm stepping into eternity. What's going to happen? Well, he said this about verse, really about verse seven and eight. He said, the victor's wreaths are splendid in exact proportion. Therefore, to the pains with which they are won, this is why Paul was allowed to fall into countless afflictions. Wait a minute. Is he saying this was, that was all for a purpose? Like what Paul went through, all things that happened to him, getting beaten like, I mean, almost to death, where people were like, he's dead. It's good. You know, we're good. Let's, let's go. And Paul's going, I've really come to the end now. He says, finish the race well. It may be sooner than you think. And as this guy, Mesa, this Christian bishop, talked about really anthropology, the nature of man, he was trying to help us understand something, that there will be this moment. And I think it's hard for us to put in perspective right now. Like, there will be this moment where we stand before God, you know, got this crown, got this wreath is what he says here, and it's been prepared in exact proportion to the way that you lived your life. I had a, a pastor that I worked for, and I never really understood I think, the statement that he made. He's like, I just don't want to stand before God. And, and like not have much to lay at his feet. Because what do we do with these crowns, with these wreaths that we're given? Scripture also tells us that we lay them back down before God's feet. So what would it be like if we stood before God and he's like, yeah, I got this like, this little wreath for you. I mean, you got to heaven, but man, what you could have done with your life. I went to BBS. BBS is good, by the way. You know, we're starting that today. I went to BBS. Like I went to church every Sunday. Like I was really nice to people. And God's going like, I mean, what else? Like, what'd you do with your time in between that? Like, was it all about you? And Paul was like, hey, man, I'm, I'm sold out. He's asking the church the same question. Are you? You got to wonder what it will be like standing before God. I always think about that. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I don't want to stand before him and go like, man, man, here you go, right? Verse 8, we'll finish it with that. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Think about that moment. As we think about like BBS, this is a, it's a small week in comparison to the entirety of eternity, but it could be the thing that changes a young person's life. It could be the first time that they hear the gospel message and they hear that and it really makes sense and the spirit works in their hearts and minds and they respond and go, I believe that. What, a, what an amazing thing that we get to be a part of. So we've got this legendary purpose and focus. Will we have this legendary end? I hope so. Because when Paul talks about it, he says, hey, I already know what's coming. There's laid up for me this crown of righteousness with the Lord, the righteous judge will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all those who love his appearing. We're doing this together, aren't we? Right? So we've got purpose, focus, and there's an end coming. And I hope, because I can't make this decision for you, Throughout your life, between these moments, these big things that we get to do, not only do we value what we're doing right now, which we should, but are we saying, are we taking every opportunity, are we taking advantage of this purpose, focus, and in that we will have one day, right? Because once we reach that point and we're standing before God, like there's no time, right? There's no time to go back and like, God, I'm sorry, let me go back. <laughs> let me go back and change some things, right? You only get one life, right? That saying's been around for a while, you only live once. So, are we going to take that seriously? And I hope so. I hope that this week makes a big impact on you. Um, and I want to share just one more story about a person who was influential in uh, Christianized lives, um, really a couple, uh, Rick and Joan Sharp. Um, we were invited to go to a conference in Colorado, which when you've never been to Colorado before, or, well, we've been there before, but when we've never gone together, like seen it during the summer, and you've been there, it's just beautiful, right? All the big rocks and stuff that you climb, and mountains and then so we were invited to go to a conference on worldview and christy and i went it was really amazing but i noticed something while we were there rick and joan like we were going we were having meals with them we were sitting down and uh joan she wasn't eating much of anything 
And I was like, that's like that's strange, like what's going on? Like maybe a diet, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, so we we got several weeks out from that event. We came back, and I was I asked Rick, Rick, is everything okay? And he said, Well, I'm glad you asked. Actually, it's not. Jonah has stomach cancer, and she'd had it for a while, but she wasn't you know, going around there like, Well, with me, you know, I am sick and I'm not doing well. And she lived about another year after that. But I remember this moment. Um, and, and Rick and I, we've done ministry together, student ministry for a long time, and uh, she was on her deathbed. And uh, she asked me to come to their home, so I did, and I was, um, I went there. It's always kind of difficult, like when you're in that situation, you don't always know what to say. Like, well, you're the pastor, you should always know. I'm like, I don't always know what to say. Um, sometimes I just don't say anything, and uh, that's what's needed. So I went there, and I just sat with her, and I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to say, right? Uh, and she looks at me, she goes, <clears throat> Michael, I've, uh, I've prepared some things for your family. And she had this like box of uh, kids books. Like we had just had Alana and um, so we didn't have a lot of that stuff. And she prepared books from her family, like collection that she gave to us. And then she starts asking me, she's, she's going, um, and Michael, tell me about what's going on with you. It's like, what is God doing? And how can I pray for them? And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Like, uh, you know, you're at the end, and I've been around people on both sides of that, people that, um, and just sickness and illness has kind of claimed your mind, too, and so you're just not there, but she was, like, fully there, which is something I had never experienced before, somebody who was following Jesus, and she uh, ended well, she did, and uh, yeah, at the end of that conversation, you know, I, I asked her, I kind of felt like, maybe you should pray for me, <laughs> you're unworthy to even be here. So uh, I said, can I pray for you? And we did, and I left. She passed away um, a few days later, but, but I always remember that. I'm like, how do we, how do we really finish well? Because when it comes down to it like that, that looks very different for a lot of people. So for us as believers, as we're thinking about this legendary purpose, this legendary focus, there's going to be an end. And I know we'll look back to all these things, and we'll be like, man, I'm so great that I got to be a part of it, so great that I got to do that. But are we following Jesus faithfully throughout our lives? And then so much so that when we're at the end, and maybe something awful like is claiming your life, and that uh, it's not something that I you know, would want to walk through or that anybody would, but when you're able to be in that circumstance, having not eaten any food for like three or four weeks, and then and you ask somebody else, like, here's some stuff I prepared for you. How can I pray for you? What is God doing? Like, I hope for those are things that are coming out of my mouth at the end, um, and I hope for you as well that, like, maybe... We think like, no, oh, maybe yes, it'll be fun Sunday, <laughs> right? It is. I mean, do great things. But we've got to think about it in, in perspective, right, in purpose. What are all these moments? It's not just about being legendary like right now, this week, about doing something right now. It's about going, what are we going to do for the rest of our lives? What are we going to do after this week? Like, don't we let the high of VBS or a camp, we're going to go to a camp in a few weeks, so the kids will get to experience that. It's going to be awesome. It is. When we come back, we come off of those moments, what are we going to do for the rest of our lives? So that when we end up in that place, we can go, man, God's been good. He's been awesome. And here's how I'm going to live because of that, no matter what phase of life we're in. And so what I want to do is pray for you and just share that message again. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you're here or you're listening online and you're like, BBS, what is that? Vacation Bible School looks great. You should come, by the way. Uh, if you're not here, go online, our website, and uh, register your kids for that and come. But if you don't know, we're going to share this message. It's that Jesus came, he lived a sinless life, he died on the cross for our sins, because we couldn't do it on our own. If you look at the quiet time passage yesterday, it talked about this scale that only God possesses. And, and what are all these things that we put on it? Well, good things, right things. But in the end, what's the thing that saves us? What's the thing that when we're at the end of our lives, we're in that place, we're able to go, I'll stand before God, and he will hand me that wreath, hopefully a big one, right? But we'll just give back to him or that crown. But we'll be able to say, the only reason I'm here because of what God has done for me on the cross. And the Bible tells us when we believe that, we really believe it, not just offer lip service to it, not just come to church. We believe it and we confess with our mouths that he's the Lord of our lives. We don't go back from that. You don't change from that, right? Everything just gets better from then on out, knowing and following God. And so I hope maybe if you haven't made that decision, uh, that you'd make that today. Uh, if you're here in person, I'd love to talk to you about it. Uh, if you're online, then reach out to us and I'd be glad to visit with you as well. So, BBS, what are we going to do this week? Uh, a lot of really awesome stuff. We're going to get to you know, throw the ball around with kids, have an awesome time. There's going to be that moment you get to share. The moment you get to share the truth, 
And then that's why we do it, right? So that we can all be part of this legendary purpose. We can have legendary focus. But we all might have legendary end, like Paul was talking to the church in Ephesus and to Timothy. We we'll take it for granted. Amazing things we get to be a part of and do. And I'm thankful for it. Thankful we get to do it with you, church family. So let's do it. Let me pray for you. Uh, and then we'll close. Uh, Father, we uh, thank you for today. We thank you that uh, you do amazing things. You just let us be a part of it. Uh, God, I just pray that as we think about all these kids and these families that are going to be coming, um, God, that our hearts will be burdened for them this week, um, but it, would just, it wouldn't just stay there. Um, God, that as we think about this purpose that we have in our lives, we think about this focus you've given us in our lives. Um, God, you've made that really clear for each and every single one of us. Um, God, that as we leave this week, all the things that we get to do, uh, I pray that we would remember there's always going to be an end for everything, for everyone. And, and God, I pray that we could live lives that are worthy, not just to this week, maybe yes, um, but that we would live lives that are somebody might call legendary one day, not because we made a bunch of basketball hoops, um, but because we followed you faithfully. Um, God, I just pray that that would be what people would think about. Let us live that legendary life that has more to do with you than ourselves. And it's your name we pray. Amen.